three. Welcome to session number five, and thank you for attending this and the previous presentation at the 12th International Conference for Teachers of English, Language Teaching During COVID-19. It is my honor to introduce the three presenters that will be, that will be talking about COIL, a collaborative online international learning, which is a pilot project experience. First, let me introduce Mrs. Brenna Woods. Mrs. Brenna Woods, Woods is a teacher from Honduras and it's part of the faculty members of the Teaching of Languages Department and the Languages Center at Pedagogica Nacional, at Universidad Pedagogica Nacional Francisco Morazan in La Ceiba Atlantida. Sorry, she's part of the, the department only. Um, she has been a teacher at UPNFN for at least eight years in the English program that she coordinates to date. Mrs. Woods also works as a liaison to INCODE coaching students to prepare for a scholarship for studying abroad. Currently, she's working on a research project in call as a, requ as a requisite to fi finalizing her master's degree in um, TEFL. The second presenter is Mrs. Stephanie Mateo. She's a language teacher from Honduras. She's part of the faculty members of the teaching of Languages Department and the language, at the Language Center at Universidad Pedagogica Nacional Francisco Morazan, where she teaches English and methodology classes. She has also taught Spanish to English native speakers as part of her graduate studies at Colorado State University. Mrs. Mateo holds a master's degree in teaching of English as a foreign language and a master's degree in languages, literatures, and cultures in with a specialization in Spanish. Her interests are related to the teaching of languages from a more humanistic perspective, focusing on equity, diversity, and policy transformation. She's also interested in the teaching of languages through technology. Currently, she's working on a research project related to the strategies teachers and students are adopting in, her, in their English classes in public institutions in Honduras during the COVID-19 pandemic. Our, our next presenter will be Mrs. Sandra Alvarado, who is an English teacher from Honduras. She's also part of the um, language uh, department faculty of the Universidad Pedagogica Nacional in Santa Rosa de Copan. Mrs. Alvarado has worked there for at least seven years where she trains teachers. She has participated in research in teaching of English as a foreign language. Recently, she has participated, she's, she participated as a presenter in the National Congress of Educational Research organized by the UPNFM in, to, in 2021. Currently, she collaborates as a research liaison promoting various activities in the field of scholarly investigation. We coordinator with coordinators, Dr. Yoa and Mr. Jorge Matamoros, all three teachers were selected to participate in the collaborative online international learning project of the Department of State representing UPNFM. I hope that you really enjoyed this presentation. And if you have any questions, you can um, post them in YouTube and in the comments through YouTube so I can read them at the end of the session. Okay. Thank you, Carmen. Thank you, Carmen, for your kind words and having us here in this 12th International Conference for Teachers of English. And here we are more than delighted to share with us um, what uh, are COIL, or what is COIL, right? COIL, it stands for Collaborative Online International Learning. The main purpose is to connect students and professors in different countries around the world, and uh, working also in collaborative projects and discussions as part of their coursework. Next, please. Thank you. Uh, you may wonder, what is the methodology of COILS? How do uh, universities work with? Well, first of all, COIL allows partnering professors, professors from both universities, and also promotes student interaction and collaborative learning. Additionally, COIL promotes that collaboration that benefits students, both professors and also 
institutions at the same time. And how uh, is the planning uh, inside of a COIL project? Well, the most important aspect here is that uh, uh, both teachers have a successful collaboration that benefits students, professors, and institutions in uh, during the length of the project. It's important also to mention the advantages of COIL. Number one is that uh, uh, teachers receives an extensive support by supervisors in order to develop an interesting um, set of plan of activities to help the students. Also, another advantage of COILS is that uh, um, the cost and, and logistics of a trip abroad is a very cheap. So with a COIL project, we have the opportunity to participate in an exchange program without traveling abroad. Additionally, inside of a COIL project is uh, designed to not to affect the curricular content. So each teacher grades the students in their own classroom. And uh, all students in the classroom will benefit from a multicultural teamwork skills that they are going to acquire inside of this project. And additionally to this multicultural skills that they are going to develop, they are going to work online. So they are going to acquire virtual tools and skills that they, uh, the students are going to need for their future labor market. Here, we are going to talk about this experience that the, um, we have uh, um, working with uh, these three universities, Bridge Valley Community and Technical College, the UTRGV University, and also Sinclair Community College. In my case, I was working with Sinclair Community College. And in this class, we were working with the Spanish. Um, the objectives that we, uh, my partner and I uh, planned in this class, that the, the students will be able to describe different factors that contribute to a person's cultural perspective. Also, uh, one of the main products uh, inside of this project, what the students will be able to create videos describing dishes and touristic places of um, Ohio and Honduras. And finally, also the students will be able to create a brochure describing touristic places and gastronomy uh, of these two places, Ohio and Honduras. Now, I would like to interview my colleague, um, Brenna with her project. Brenna, tell us, who are you partnered with and also um, what was your project about and which were the objectives of your project? Thank you, Sandra. And my project was named Revising Misconceptions. We were paired with UTRGV, it stands for University of Texas Rio Grande Valley with Professor Marianita Escamilla. In UPNFM, we had a group, two groups of students from a class of speech and conversation, and we had two groups from um, English 1301 from UTRGV. And the main objectives of our project was to reconceptualize cultural misconceptions of Honduran and American cultures in conversations with international partners. Com conversations here were very important because as to the speech and conversation class, students were uh, we aim to um, develop students' speaking abilities. And then we worked on creating a collaborative presentation on the analysis of common misconceptions and cultures based on conversations in their experiential learning. Implicitly here, we also worked the writing skill that is part of English 1301, where students were supposed to write outlines and um, also scripts for their presentation. Very interesting um, objectives and activities. Now I would like to ask the same question to Stephanie Cassidy. Tell us who are your partner with and also your project and the objectives of your projects. Thank you, Ms. Alvarado. Well, um, 
my project uh, was called Beyond Borders. Uh, and we were, well, I was partnered with a, a teacher from uh, West Virginia at Bridge Valley Community College. Um, his name is uh, Caleb Winters. And Professor Caleb Winters uh, was working with English communication too. And I was uh, given a class, well, I, I am still giving a class at Language Center at UPNFM uh, called Academic Writing, right? So we decided to work with this class and uh, the main objective in terms of uh, academic purposes was for us to, for our students to write an argumentative paper at the end. But uh, as you mentioned, and as Brenna also mentioned, one of the purposes of uh, this COIL projects is also for our students to uh, grow culturally, right? And that they can communicate and learn more about culture uh, with uh, other students. So some of the objectives that we, we had for this uh, for this uh, project was show cross cultural competences by communicating with people from other parts of the world and to uh, raise awareness, uh, demonstrate their ability to use uh, primary sources such as interviews, newspapers, news, oral stories, etc., to write an argumentative paper. And uh, the last one explain a social economic political problem from different perspectives and purposes and propose a solution to that issue. So the problem that we decided to work with was the crisis at the border. Because uh, by the time uh, we were discussing what to do and creating the project, there was a lot going on with the caravans and the crisis at the border with all Central Americans fleeing the countries. And so we thought that this was a very good opportunity for our students and, and Dr. Winter's uh, students to um, get to know more about what their perspectives are. Thank you, Ms. Cáceres, for telling us about the important uh, objectives of your project. Now, also continuing with uh, this project, uh, it has stages. Ms. Brenna, tell us uh, what are the stages of your project? Well, uh, revising this conception was divided into three crucial stages, the pre-coil, the coil, and then a final reflection stage. In the pre-coil stage, we wanted first to give our students in our classrooms without meeting um, to go over a little background of certain concepts, especially intercultural competence and intercultural communication, since they would be doing a lot of this. And so they did a lot of readings and TED and watched some TED Talks and we discussed them in class. Then we started introducing them to their classmates in Texas and in Honduras using icebreakers. We had an icebreaker made on TikTok where they had to present a day in the life of a coiler. And then we did a two truths and a lie through Flipgrid. Finally, then we got to a stage where we had to make the groups and where they um, got together to meet each other and ask each other questions. And then we had an initial survey, which was um, based on uh, a document by Purdue that is um, related to intercultural competence. Then we moved on to our COIL project, which was the core of this um, project. And um, we started out with a brainstorming and reflection stage where students started to think about what misconceptions they would have about the other cultures. So we had some students come up with, they thought that um, Texans were all blonde or redheads with freckles and blue eyes. And then people thought that Honduras was an island, for example, and, and there were different kinds of misconceptions. Then these students went into group discussions and with one of those misconceptions that they found in their brainstorming and they started discussing about it, clarifying it, and then they moved to the next stage. The next stage was creating a, an opposite editorial, an outline and a script for their presentation. Then they took that editorial uh, to peer review where their peers would give them, and this was another opportunity to interact with other students and talk about ways to improve their presentations. And finally, the final outcome or the product would be an oral presentation talking about those misconceptions. And finally, we got to the final reflection stage where students um, filled out the, the second part of the Purdue um, instrument, which was the final survey. And then um, they created some final reflection videos on Flipgrid. 
So basically the revising misconceptions included, like I mentioned before, a stage of development of speaking and writing skills based on intercultural competence. Undoubtedly, those were remarkable um, activities. Now, I would like to ask the same question to Ms. Gasseris about the stages of your project. Yes, yes. thank you. So um, my project, similar to Ms. Wood's project, had three stages, the pre-coil, the coil, and the post-coil. For the pre-coil, uh, we had some icebreakers and the icebreakers were divided into synchronous and asynchronous icebreakers. We did some of uh, the activities proposed uh, in the training that we had because we also went through a training before uh, working with the projects. And one of them called layers of our culture uh, where students just talk to, to us about different um, uh, aspects of their cultures and uh, misconceptions too, and also stereotypes that people have about them. For example, uh, students from West Virginia and people from West Virginia in general um, go through a very, difficult process, uh, a very difficult situation sometimes because there are a lot of stereotypes about them and Hondurans as well. So this was a very nice um, um, moment for break the ice and also to get to know more about their culture. And we also did a, an initial survey, the same survey that Ms. Wood uh, used uh, for the for the asynchronous learning uh, icebreakers, we did um, Padlet. In Padlet, there's a, a map where you can drop a pin uh, in, at, at a place that you wanna talk about and then write a description, post some videos, pictures, etc. We did that and we also did some Flipgrid videos for our students to uh, share with us something about gastronomy, music, uh, dancing or anything else. Then the coil, uh, the core uh, stage, uh, we did some uh, synchronous interviews about the topic, crisis are th at the border, right? Uh, students in, uh, interviewed uh, one another uh, here, then they started working on their first draft using the information they gathered from the interviews and from other uh, sources. They did asynchronous peer editing uh, in Google Drive and they, um, the, the information that they shared was more about, not about the, the language itself, but about the content of the, the paper. And then they wrote the final draft. And the post coil was also uh, the final survey, which, is, which was the same one that we did at the beginning, but this time at the end of the project, and some final reflections uh, in the form of a video. Excellent. And uh, we are sure that the outcomes of this experience wa was um, awesome. And um, I would like to invite, uh, continue with you, Ms. Uh, Caceres, sharing us the outcome of your experience. Yes, thank you. Well, um, I am in very glad to say that we reached our goal in this project. Uh, we, like, we had some issues too, but we, finished it with uh, with a, a final draft of the argumentative paper which which was one of the objectives uh, students learned a lot about academic writing but also about culture uh, my students for them this was the first time that they interacted with the native speakers of Spanish, of English sorry so for them it was a, a great experience and also uh, it was a, a good opportunity for American students to get to know more about our culture as Hondurans right because uh, the information that they always hear is not always good right so this was a good time for uh, Honduran students to show off uh, everything that we have here that is beautiful. And students are more aware also of uh, uh, social cultural differences and the challenges that, that I had, well, we both had uh, with uh, Dr. Winters was the dropouts problems that we had 
Uh, we started with around 17 or 18 students, but because of the pandemic and because this is like almost the end of the year, we lost many students. And so at the end, uh, we ended up with uh, around nine to 10 students. And that was an issue, uh, especially for the peer editing part. And sometimes the students attitude too, because there were some students that were too shy and they didn't want to participate at the beginning. So we had to um, uh, move them around, right? To, to find a way uh, that they can speak, that they could speak with the, the other students. So we mixed them and it was a little bit challenging, but other than that, we had very nice outcomes. Excellent. Um, I'm sure that that experience was marvelous. Uh, Ms. Brenna, also the outcomes of your project uh, were awesome. Tell us about them. Well, in our projects, uh, just as um, Ms. Stephanie has mentioned, we did have some challenges and similar challenges, right, that we would have to face. And these challenges, I wanna start by them, were integrating groups because of student mobility. So there were so many dropouts that sometimes we would have to rearrange a group in, a, in another session and we would come to another session and then, but let me tell you that my partner, uh, she was very resourceful. So she was always like, no, don't worry, we can put them here. And, and she was very, um, she was beyond words, right? I, I can't even describe how grateful I am for her. And then our problem also at the beginning was breaking the ice because either American students felt that they were um, they were going to be too advanced in English, and then our students thought that they probably they wouldn't have the the skills to hold a conversation. So we had to kind of push them at the beginning so they could start talking. But at the end, we were able to achieve our goals, and um, under those outcomes, not only having those final presentations, but really understanding the importance of intercultural competence and being able to practice our oral and writing skills in this project. And what was more significant also is that my classrooms are multicultural because I have students that are Garifuna, Misquitos, and, and they started um, mentioning that they became more aware of um, the importance of learning how to communicate with other cultures and so on, not only people from other countries, but from the cultures that are represented here in, at our university. Definitely those uh, outcomes um, shows that uh, the evidences that you are going to present with us uh, uh, to see um, how was uh, that COIL, uh, COIL project. So I would like to invite uh, Mrs. Stephanie to share with us uh, some evidences of that project that you developed. Yes, thank you. So um, I have some screenshots of, of the activities that we did uh, in the pre-COIL. Uh, remember that I told you about the, the map in Padlet? So this is the one. Uh, as you could see, as you can see, like most of them are the students in, in America are from West Virginia, but they dropped some other pins uh, all over the country too. Um, and my students, most of them are from Tegucigalpa. So uh, because I wanted them to show a little bit of our country, I asked them to pick a, a, a place in Honduras that they want to talk about and just drop the, the, the pin there. So they talked about Santa Barbara, uh, Bay Islands, eh, Copan, etc. Uh, we did also some, uh, we did the, the activity with a flip grid and here are like the responses that they had. This is a screenshot from the interviews that they did. Um, students in the US, they, they were already in face-to-face -face classes, right? So what they did is that they went to a space, a quiet space, and that's why you can see that here there are two people in the same room. Uh, and this is one of the examples of the essays and the peer edit. Great. Awesome. And now I would like uh, to invite Brenna to share with us the evidences of your project. Well, 
Well, um, as you can see here, um, I have some screenshots of some of the activities. So in the first two pictures that you can see, um, we have students, um, we use Google Classroom as a resource here. And so where students had like a common place to upload and download assignments. And also this is the Flipgrid. In the Flipgrid, they were able to upload their TikToks. They were able to upload, participate in the Two Truths and a Lie and also make their final reflections. And then um, this is an example here in the middle of their assignment where they were working. And what is interesting here is that the students had the opportunity to contribute because this was through Google Docs. And finally, something that is um, important to mention is that all groups were supposed to give their presentations its own name and personalize it. So um, some of the groups that um, or some of the names that stand out or stood out were united by an objective and learning about our neighbors that students became. And as you can see here, um, we have four students, two which represented UPNFM and two that represented UTRGB. And so with these assignments and everything was the way how we got to this final outcome. Um, I'm going to share with you uh, two videos, uh, well, just 30 seconds of these two videos um, that were the reflections uh, of my students, and then we're going to also show uh, Mrs. Brenna's students as well. So let me just share that with you real quick here. Let me know if you can see the videos, please. Yes. Okay. Yes. Here's my the sound. I am the talking out. about the code project. Hi, my name is Sylvia and I am study at the language center at the UPN FM. And I am talking about the code project with university students from Virginia, USA. Uh, the CALD project was very significant for me because it is the first time that I shared an experience of this type, uh, sharing with native English speakers. Okay, and let me show you the other one. The CALD project was very interesting and I very much enjoyed participating. It was very interesting to see the perspective of the Americans. Uh, oftentimes, we always just see our perspective. We live in an echo chamber uh, where we just analyze our own ideas and we don't try to challenge our own ideas. And we reject everything that comes from, from other people that are opposed to our ideas and principles. Okay, because of the time, I'm just going to show you 30 seconds. Now, let me show you a little bit of, of uh, Mrs. Wood's students too. Hello, Mrs. and classmates. This has been an incredible experience and it is my pleasure to share with all of you my final reflection. Having this privil the privilege of meeting with all of you was something that not everybody will ever had at a university and it was something that changed me in a sort of way because before that I didn't like to participate to talk that, that much in a group or even participate in class. I'm so grateful and blessed for having this experience in my life. And this. It's important to note that um, this student is a UTRGB student. Um, this has been a pretty cool opportunity, uh, the COIL program. Never would I have ever thought of being in a program or being in a course that it's so unique to where you like get to collaborate with students from another country, which is really cool. Um,
Yes. Well, that was it. That's it. That's our project. Excellent. Uh, I don't know if you have final words, Ms. Stephanie. Yes. So mm -hmm. as final thoughts and final remarks, uh, the reason why we're presenting this today is because we want to encourage all teachers, university teachers, regardless of the university you work for, uh, to join COIL. Uh, there are, here in Honduras, there are COIL projects with uh, CEUTEC, with uh, UTH, with UNA, UPNFM. And let me tell you that some of my students were from El CIE which is a public high school, right, here in, in Honduras, uh, part of UPN FM. So that means that maybe we can also have high school students, as long as they have an intermediate level of, of English, they can participate in this. So we encourage you to uh, try COIL, uh, to work on a project, and to learn more about this, because this is a, a very um enriching opportunity not just for your students but also for you as teachers we also learn we we'll learn a lot about culture and also we we'll learn about uh, the other teachers the students so i'm just glad and grateful to UPNFM and the united states embassy for this great opportunity excellent and uh... As uh, you said, uh, uh, all of us, the teachers of the UPN, we are invited because this is only the beginning of these projects. More pro uh, COIL projects um, will uh, come next year. Um, now, I, I don't know if, if there are some comments in the base. Let me see. Oh. At the moment, no, right? In this moment, I only think, congratulations, think. yes. Ms. Alvarado, oh, hello. I, think, I think Carmen uh, has some questions, right? Oh, okay. um, hi, again, um, actually I was checking um, the comments on the presentation and actually it was more like appreciation on the project. I feel like more, most, most of them are students uh, who are like really excited to learn about this project. And I feel like there are some that they were actually participating into the project, but it's incredible how, to see how excited they are. And like they actually say, and it is a great project and they're really thankful for such thing, right? One of the things that I would like to say is really interesting how students through the videos you demonstrated um, appreciate having this opportunity to interact with students from other countries, learn about cultures, which actually opened their eyes. So it's really, it's really nice to see. And I hope this project continues and see what, what happened in the future. So congratulations to the to you and, and that's it. Thank you. And I think we don't want to close without um, giving a special thanks to our coordinators at UPNFM. Dr. Ulloa, Gloria Ulloa, and Mr. Jorge Matamoros, who were like the backbone of this project. They were always there supporting us and asking us questions. What are you doing? How are you going? Until the end of it, right? And they're still here supporting us and telling us, well, we have to move on. What's next? And, and that's really important whenever you're in any kind of projects like these. Yes, and we also want to thank uh, Dr. Morales from INCODE at UPNFM because he was all, always there too and he encouraged us to, to start this project and to continue till the end. So thank you very much INCODE, UPNFM, and as I said before, the United States Embassy for the training and for the follow-up too. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, right, no?
Yo creo que ya ustedes. <laughs> sí, ya cerraron. David, is it over? I think it's still live. Um, Yo creo que ya ustedes. Sí, ya.